Hello and welcome to the Privet Park Legends podcast. Today I'm joined by a Borough legend who made 598 appearances for the club, earning two league titles and one promotion. Welcome, Gary Jura. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. So, first thing, we're in a different location to normally, instead of Zoom, we're at Privet Park. What's the first memory you get when you walk back here? Well, lots of memories for me, as you can imagine. I mean, I've started off 1976, way back then, you know, obviously when I made my debut. 16 year old, you know, I was, I was expecting to play for the youth team on the Saturday and I was told I was left out of the youth team. Uh, a little bit disappointed that, that uh, soon found out I was in the first team. So, uh, yeah, that was back in 1976. So, uh, lots and lots of memories for me. And I think the first thing you've got to mention when we come here is the state of the pitch. Not bad, is it, compared to some leagues? It certainly is. You know, the ground has always been you know, a top non-league ground for me. You know, locally, you know, Privet Park was always a place to come. You know, you had Jubilee Park, you had Nywood Lane at Bob. Now, there were some good grounds, but Privet was always a special place, yeah. And the pitch has had some work done to it over the years, I see. Mm-hmm. You know, so it's looking good. Could, Love to be playing nowadays. Could challenge any Premier League side, couldn't it? Oh, well, you know, who knows? <laughs> so... Let's get on to your career. Yeah. First of all, what was your first memory of football? Football? Oh, playing f- from a very early age. Um, my brother, obviously, was three, four years younger than me, and uh, you know, we were always playing football. As soon as we got home from school, out in the park, on the, on, out in the front of the house, or out the back playing football, you know, we were always playing football. You know? So, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously, my brother obviously turned out to be a professional in the end, but obviously, you know, we always, that was it. We lived and bred football, really, you know. Do you think that competitive team you and your brother helped you improve you as a player? Oh, without a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt. I didn't like losing to him. I'm sure he didn't like losing to me. You know, obviously there are many sort of uh, heated discussions over the game of football or tennis, whatever it might be. Tiddlywinks, you know, we're always very competitive, yeah. Did that keep up during your playing career as well? Yes, I'd say so. I mean, obviously, uh, Ian, like I said, we didn't play with each other much. Probably played against them a couple of times. He played for Saint Say, and when I was at Pompey, we had a behind closed doors friendly so against Southampton. You know, so yeah, so like I say, but um, we're very very competitive. Yeah, we wouldn't want to lose to each other. And what were you? What football were you watching at the time? Were you going coming here, or were you going to? Yeah, Portsmouth? well, obviously late sixties. My dad was very much a Pompey fan. You know, I remember the first game that really comes to mind is Pompey nineteen seventy against Arsenal in the FA Cup. You know, and Fratton Park was actually heaving. Um, and obviously then obviously it sort of got the juices flowing if you like you know obviously and then uh, but I always kind of privet when Pompey weren't at home you know and uh, privet was the place to play I think most people locally in Gosport were probably thinking we want to get play in the enclosure you know because it's floodlit and, and uh, the occasion so the atmosphere was fantastic for me you know do you think Gosport can get that um, atmosphere back I mean there's well, been a lot of worry about tendencies especially over the last couple of seasons, I know there's financial problems. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's difficult, obviously, for any non-league club at the moment, I think, financially. Um, but Gosport always had a decent following, I mean, obviously, in my time. But obviously, what um, a lot of people seem to appreciate was that there was seven or eight Gosport players. You know, so that obviously tend to attract a lot of people, a lot of friends, family, whatever. So the, the crowd should be boosted that way, you know. So, yeah, I mean, I'd love to see you know, the club maybe get a little bit more local interest. And I'm sure, you know, the crowds will increase as they go on. And then, so you've talked about, you know, what what was your inspiration, inspirational player? Was it someone at Portsmouth when you watched them on the terraces? No, funny enough, obviously, um, Colin Bell was always my sort of uh, player I used to watch, which won't mean anything to you. <laughs> <laughs> but he played for England, uh, he was a midfield player, and they played for Man City at the time. And that was, if you like, my second side. I had a Man City kit mm-hmm. when, I'm talking early 70s, mid 70s, you know. So even then, obviously, uh, you know, I had a red and black strip with number eight on the back. Um, so Colin Bell was the didn't inspiration. Did he go for like the highest transfer fee at one point? Was it? Was it? Colin I don't think Bell? He did no. Was it another City player at yeah, the same time? Wasn't probably, it? Probably. Yeah. There's a few. There were a few at that side. time, yeah, weren't yeah. there? Yeah. But he was an uh, England player, box mm-hmm. to box. Never got into any trouble, you know. Obviously, and uh, he, he had a, an engine. What well, these things have an engine. He used to keep going for ninety minutes, you know. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, he was my inspiration really. And then, what? was your first actual football team you played for? Was it a school team? Or yeah, a, yeah, or I played for the Rauner Junior School, obviously it was my first side, obviously when I was sort of eight years of age. Um, eight and nine, obviously I played in the junior school, and then obviously I picked for Gosport and Ferrum schools, uh, I was about nine, and then a, a local guy called Bill Kircher, he set up a side called Hillside Youth Club, which was a, a Sunday Lads League side. Mm-hmm. And he took sort of six or seven of the Gosport Farm side to form this Hillside Youth Club, you know, and uh, we stayed together about five or six years on from there, you know, and uh, 
you know, so always on a Sunday, obviously I never played on the Saturday at the time, uh, it was only when I got 16, 17 years of age, I, I started uh, playing at gospel in the, in the youth team. And it's interesting to say, a lot of players from that team come from the gospel and fair. Mm. How important was that gospel and fair school in getting players through from the youth team? I think it, it was key to us, obviously, because that that team spirit, you know, obviously, and, it's running for a proverbial brick wall, if you like, and that's what we did. You know, every sort of week, you know, we were going to places like Kidderminster, Gloucester, Worcester, um, Dover. You know, probably punching above our weight to a certain extent, but we we're going to these uh, places and, and winning. You know, obviously we dug in, and I think that was key. The team spirit. You know, obviously we had a fair amount of ability, of ability as well. It's a very good side. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's just fortunate. I'm not sure these times will ever come back, but let's say seven or eight gospel guys uh, all play for each other. Do you think schools football isn't as competitive as it used to be? Whether that's between schools or actually within the school, yeah. with people coming through. I don't think it is. To be fair, I don't see a lot of school football. To be fair, but it doesn't seem to be the same sort of, um, yeah, the commitment. If you like, obviously, mm -hmm. when I was growing up, there's you know fields full of people playing football. Yeah, it would be football in the winter, it'd be cricket in the summer. You know, it just doesn't seem to go on so much nowadays. You know, and which is it's going to have a knock-on effect sooner or later. It's got to. Do you think, is that more of a social change? Because you've got like different lifestyles, you know, you've got big computers it's and all that, people working more, or is it that there's not enough money, to, especially in schools, to say, oh, we'll put this much money into sport? Yeah, well, I think how much money does it cost to, you know, get a ball, you know, we used to get a ball and four jumpers and you've got two goals and a, and a football, you know, mm -hmm. so I'm not sure about the football side, of, uh, the money side of things, um, it's just the the desire and the passion to want to do it, I guess, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, but it certainly doesn't seem anywhere near as strong as it was, yeah. So, the Sunday League school teams to play for, what was the team that got you almost the attention from gospel other teams? I'd say probably Hillside, Hillside mm -hmm. Youth Club, obviously, because Bill Kircher, the manager I mentioned earlier, he had a, a lot of local contacts, um, particularly someone called Dave Hurst, who was the mm -hmm. secretary of the Portsmouth Lads League, and, and Dave ended up going to Portsmouth as a development officer. You know, he took the Andy Orfords, Kit Simons, and Darren Andertons, what is what side to the club. Mm -hmm. um, so obviously I think that was probably the biggest influence. You know, and so when I got to sort of 16, 17, um, you know, I, I turned up at Gospel. Dennis Proby was the coach then, who was a, was a naval sort of uh, coach, I believe. He took the national side, and he took the Gospel youth team. And like I say, from there, I only played a handful of games before I was picked for the first team. So never looked back from there, really. Did you see Gosport as an avenue to maybe get to Portsmouth or Southampton, or did you see it as a club you want really wanted to play for? Oh, desperate, yeah. Like I say, being a Gosport guy, I mean, obviously, I'm sure the others have said that as well. But obviously, you always want to play in the enclosure. Mm -hmm. You know, there's on a Sunday morning, obviously, there's pitches out, out outside of Privet, absolutely chock a block with people watching. You know, and people always wanted to get in and play on on Privet Park. You know, and the same for me. You know, mm -hmm. obviously, when I was growing up, Privet Park was the place to be. Obviously, if I can. Play at Pratt Park, yeah. I'll play at Rupert Park. But yeah, Privet Park was definitely the place, you know, it's mm -hmm. that, you know, the, the hometown thing. Um, wanting to play for Gosport was something obviously very long on the list, yeah. You mentioned before about sk essentially skipping the reserves and jumping from that youth football to first team football. Was that a big shock to you? No, it just seemed like a natural progression. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously it's strange, really. Uh, as I, say, I mean, I know the players, when they saw me for the first time, a lot of them commented on the, the size I was, you know, <laughs> scrawny, yeah, whatever. Um, but, yeah, like I said, it just seemed to sort of adapt and, and got on with it. The first game went reasonably well. Uh, and then, like I say, I just knew success. Because, obviously, I, I started, I think it was the February, I was still 16, but mm -hmm. obviously, you know, obviously that season, we had another half season, we won the league that first season. You know, so for me, it's just a fantastic time to be a gospel player, you know. Do you think it helped people doubt you in a sense, that you were small, still only 16, you yeah, proved I, them wrong and there was I, no pressure on you yeah. to... Yeah, like they, they never said it if they thought it, I think. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like I say, I just adapted to it, I just sort of mm -hmm. fitted in. It was fortunate, I think, um, for me, obviously, I think the regular right back, um, I think it was Doug Stanley, broke his leg, you know, obviously, and... Uh, and it's just a, you know obviously the odd opportunity for me to sort of step in, and I just took it really, you know, and uh, from there on in, I've never sort of knew bad times, you know. It's funny that injury has become had two blessings disguised, didn't it? So it's funny how that strain that incident worked out for the whole club, isn't it? Yeah, it, it is. It is a weird time. Like I say, I, I think John mentioned obviously the Brian Mesher era. I didn't know that era, mm -hmm. you know. Obviously, when I came along, Tony Brookwood and Peter Ricker were the managers. They were gospel guys through and through. Everything was voluntary. You know, mm -hmm. they didn't get paid of anything for doing anything. Tony used to take the training. Um, and I would say, 
money was never an issue for us. We just wanted to pay for the eleven blue across sport, you know. And uh, like I say, seven or eight of us week in week out, the team more or less picked itself, really. You know. Was that something that changed over your career? Because you started in the late seventies, then left. The, the you know, left in the late <laughs> three decades later. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think look, no, I think for majority of that time, up to probably about eighty nine, mm-hmm. uh, eighty eight, eighty nine, the side was more or less sort of you know obviously pretty stable. Yeah. Trevor Williams obviously was part of that side in the early seventies. We won the league at the second season. Uh, he's a fantastic player and obviously a great character. And he, he became the manager. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had a great season with him. Obviously won the Hans Senior Cup. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, obviously the, the team broke up after that season, after that. You know, obviously, and that's the way it was. You know, obviously, as I said before, the Gosport were probably financially always punching above their weight. Mm-hmm. Just couldn't compete with people offering the wages that they were offering. You know? yeah. Do you think that was probably the biggest success of that Gosport team? It was the consistency. You had the players seven, eight years. You had Tony Brickwood and Pete Edgar, who were former players. Pete Mullis, who was a former player, who was assistant. And he had Trevor Williams, another former player, who was yeah. then manager. Without a doubt. Obviously, that's a key to it, like I say. And, and don't forget the volunteers. I mean, it, mm-hmm. it really was a home-run club. You know, obviously, we had loads of volunteers. Um, Alan Chase, obviously, you'll see the stand, obviously, named after him. Mm-hmm. You know, you had Harry Mizzen, you know, all these sort of guys. You know, Vic Bray. Um, all guys that were just passionate about Crossfield Football Club. And that sort of obviously reflects on us. Obviously, we went out there just wanted to play for the club, you know. Uh, and as I say, it went on for a number of years. And uh, successful, really, very successful. I think I only knew one, one relegation, but everything else was pretty yeah. good times, you know. And then, do you re- so do you remember your f- debut? Which game? Or who was oh, it? I remember it was here. I mean, <laughs> I think it was Swaveland, to be honest, mm-hmm. in the FA Cup. Um, yeah, we won, you know, obviously. And... Um, and I said from there on in, I just look back. The second game was Newport away, um, and it was just a great experience. You know, obviously playing under lights, things like that. You know, it wasn't professional in that sense, but obviously it gave you the the feeling, obviously, of being a, you know a, a, another level from part football, if you like. You know, so it's yeah, fantastic times. So did you, because you were winning all the time? Did you feel like you never missed out when you jumped up from the reserves? It wasn't something you missed because a lot of players came together through the reserves as well and got to know each other. Yeah, no, I, I said I didn't, I didn't get to the reserves obviously I knew a lot of um, players in the reserves but obviously mm-hmm. I, I skipped that and um, it just seemed a natural progression for me obviously like I said I seemed to fit in well um, obviously all the lads made it so easy for me in that respect and and the style of play was great obviously we had two big strikers up front Colbert and Boswell banging and John Hawes of course getting 30-40 goals a year mm-hmm. it seemed like and uh, yeah like I say it was just good times you know and that breeds confidence doesn't it you mm-hmm. know and so first season we won the Hans uh, title second season won the Hans title and the South West Pratt Cup and then like I say we got the promotion so it's all good times good time to be mm-hmm. a possible player really do you remember in the first Hans uh, league title who you won the league against because uh, I know the match is it's, it's not on Swaley, was it? It is. Well, it's yeah, one, one nil. Was it one nil? Yeah. yeah. One nil. And I remember having a sort of shot from about 30 yards on after 10 minutes. And <laughs> and straight over the fence on the back. Um, but that still happens atmosphere. now. <laughs> yeah. The atmosphere was fantastic. Mm-hmm. You know, and that was the thing about Pruitt. You know, obviously, I remember probably our first season in the Southern League, we played Waterloo, who we were a top side locally at the time, you know. And the place here was buzzing, you know, obviously full, full to the rim, you know, and uh, fortunately we lost. But obviously, we were running close, which is just a sign of how far we'd come, you know. Mm-hmm. The good thing about the, the team at the time is obviously mm-hmm. all the wives got on as well. Yeah. So obviously, like I say, after the game, we'd all get together and come out. And um, I always thought John, I know his MOD, worked for the MOD, I think. Obviously. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we just, everyone, none of us were a big time Charlies. You know, obviously we all got on well with each other, you know, and, um, you know, the family life as well as football life was fantastic, you know. I mean, obviously on a Saturday night, we used to go down and spend all our, uh, winnings obviously down at the, the village inn, mm-hmm. you know. So uh, yeah, we, was, we weren't sort of big time Charlie. Everyone got on really well, which is a key for me, you know. Do you think the social aspect was the most important thing? If the players or even to the extent family didn't get on with it, all of each other, it would have worked. I, I think yeah. I mean, at that time, obviously, you could, obviously it's, it, it notched up another level from Hampshire League days to Southern League. Obviously, mm-hmm. it notched up. You know, obviously, so certainly more professional. You know, the fitness levels and everything had to go up. So obviously, not as if we're drinking every night, sort of thing. You know, but obviously, a Saturday night after a game is a fantastic release. You know, and, yeah. uh, and if your wives were with you, then it's it's just made for a, a better evening. You know, obviously. Mm-hmm. I'm sure they got fed up with us talking football all night, yeah. but obviously the good thing is they, they obviously got on well with each other as well. So, mm. yeah, it took a lot of pressure off in that sense, you know. But, yeah, it's just a fantastic time. And then, of course, the second year you won the, the Hampshire League again. Mm. Which one was, 
do you think had more pressure? Was the first one or was it the second one? Again, obviously, we, we just we just followed on. I think obviously mm. we were, you know, we were coming the top side locally. You know, obviously it was Waterlooville, but all of a sudden there was a, you know, it was switching towards us, and um, we had a sort of period of dominance. I think obviously lo- from the local sides, um, and then like I say, it got to a point where, uh, you know, obviously it wasn't so much pressure. I think we just enjoyed it. We just mm-hmm. sort of thought, well, we just took it as it came, you know, and every game was fantastic. A great experience, you know, from our point of view. Do you think mentality wise that was more important maybe than winning the league? That the rivals that had been ahead of you, like Fairham or Waterlooville, were now behind the gospel the leading team in the local area that was more important than well I think that was it yeah obviously like I say and um, all of a sudden you know people were sort of taking notice obviously mm-hmm. because um, I said gospel financially was never a strong club financially but it wasn't all about money for us you know obviously mm-hmm. and say you know we got win bonuses like everybody else but um, a lot of the other sides were changing all the time you know obviously trying to find the right blend we were the same team more or less week in week out you know you know each other style of play uh, you know obviously we all work for each other as I say and obviously that got us through a lot of games you know many times we had to dig the trenches at you know places like Dartford or whatever when we just barrage you know attack upon attack uh, but we just dug in managed to draw and get, uh, get out a result you know so uh, yeah I mean the second season it was just you know obviously it all came naturally to us you know we yeah. were used to winning um, and as I say I was, not if you know who the scorer was in that last game in the second season, but I'll leave that one to you looking. I'll have to look up. <laughs> I can tell you what. Well, <laughs> yeah, we beat Swaven last game of the season, and mm-hmm. um, that's obviously our second title, and we won the uh, South West Bratton Cup as well. Mm-hmm. So it's good times. Uh, with the centre of excellence, of course, starting up, do you think maybe that would get close back to the idea of that team? I hope so. I mean, or, like I say, you, you got up on the head earlier. I mean, obviously, it's all about young lads wanting to play you know mm. obviously and getting out there and playing you know and if you see lads out there and let's say everybody that's playing on Sunday morning had ambition to want to play in the enclosure for gospel you know uh, it's just a question obviously of attitude and you know obviously trying to get away from these you know IT games and everything else now get out in the fresh air mm-hmm. ball around play cricket whatever it is you know um, but like I said I think the school of excellence is something it's a start you know certainly need to get a lot more local lads involved uh, and get them interested you know that's the key do you think having TV companies maybe even film more games like BBC, for example? You know they can't, they don't have the Premier League and all these the top four divisions. Do you yeah. think they should maybe make more of an effort non-league, maybe team get it on TV? It's a place yeah. where you know no coverage is really apart from National League occasionally. No, I mean to be fair, I mean Gosport have had more coverage over the years mm-hmm. than certainly had in my time. You know, obviously, yeah. you know, obviously it was probably black and white TV up to a certain time, but late seventies, obviously. You know, there wasn't much TV coverage at all. You know, mm-hmm. uh, it's really much uh, press coverage. That's all we had. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, everything's got to help. You know, obviously without a doubt. Um, you know, maybe that's just the way things are going. But it's obviously all about you know sponsorship and everything else nowadays, isn't it? That's how mm-hmm. these clubs are going to survive, really. I think. You know, so bit of TV rights, whatever. Why not? Mm-hmm. So, yeah, the other negative, of course, in this part of the story is the um, FA Vars run, the Armands. I can see your head shaking there as I mentioned it. Well, I'm just very defeat. I think yeah. mean, that's the worst part everyone says. Don't want to mention that part. Well, to be honest with you, I've got a, a different story to that. Obviously, our first season, we played um, in the quarter final with us here. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, and um, we played Barton Rovers. Now, quarter finals in my first season, you know, obviously, is, is something that we're going to be at Wembley in two games' time if mm-hmm. we can get through this. We drew one all here. This is where I picked up a sports injury from my own goalkeeper, Mr. Milne. Um, Pole axe stuff. I was obviously I had a size nine boot in my face, <laughs> uh, but that was after about fifteen minutes. But that was that was the, my first obviously memory of the FA Vars. To be honest mm-hmm. with you, um, so we drew one all here and we lost three one at Barton. You know, but obviously we're two games away from Wembley, um, and Almondsbury obviously was another one. You think, oh, yeah, we have this in the bag. You know, mm-hmm. Graham Wake was playing, kept complaining. Of, you know, obviously a pain in his leg. Turned out he had a broken leg, but he was still <laughs> playing. So I think. Um, but yeah, that haunts us a bit. That game, Almond's Bream, I must admit, we we had that in the bag, and um, you know, we should never have lost that game. To be honest. Do you think it was the idea of maybe so close to Wembley that was, or was it just because? I, I, I wish it was I just one of those games that I, you lost. Yeah, I mean, like I say, I mean, I mean, over the years, I suppose that's maybe a bit of slight criticism. Why Gosford never had real 
strong cup runs. The FA Cup, a lot of local sides did, Farron, Waterlooville, Bognors, they've all had strong FA Cup runs. We never really had a strong FA Cup run or FA Trophy, you know. I think we got the first round proper one year. And uh, But so I've no idea whether it's a mental thing, um, luck of the draw, whatever, mm -hmm. you know. But it's uh, say we, you know, say a strong league uh, positions, but very rarely do we have a, you know, a good cup run, apart from hadn't seen a cup in 88, you know. Mm -hmm. So you played in the first Southern League um, campaign. Yeah. So, what did you think of the Southern League? Was it a big jump from the Hampshire League? Was that the big shock? Or did you, try, again, take that in your stride? It was yeah, nothing, I mean, it just seemed we all seemed to take it in our stride. Obviously, because the same brand, we're experiencing good times, confidence was high, you know, and it was like the big time had arrived. We were going to these grounds, a lot of these non league grounds are good as professional grounds, mm -hmm. you know, Worcester City, Salisbury, all these sides. So obviously, we're. Just you know, top notch uh, flood lighting, all that. So it was just fantastic for me personally. Anyway, you know, I just you know, I just loved the you know the occasion really. Um, so yeah, I don't think any of us were overawed. I mean, I think in our first season we finished in the top six or something like that, if I remember. Top half certainly, and mm -hmm. then we went into the Southern Premier League, which is obviously you know probably the, the highest position the club's ever been in. You know, mm -hmm. um, so yeah, like I say, really, it was just something we did all took naturally. You know, and any players that came in slotted into how we played. You know. So then in 81, you got your big break to go to Portsmouth. Who was the person who saw you to take you to Portsmouth? Well, Frank Burrows was the... Yeah, he'd, he'd watched a couple of games previous. Um, I believe he was watching me play against Salisbury at Salisbury. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously then I got a call from Tony Brickwood at work in Gosport. Yeah, one lunchtime, so you, we wanted to go and see Frank Burrows. I said, what do you mean we've got to go and see Frank Burrows? He said, well, he wants to see us. So he, he took me over, Tony Brickwood took me over. And said, well, what, what do you think about signing for us? I said, well, without a doubt, yeah. I was thinking, what do you want me to sign? Um, it was £10,000 at the time, obviously, yeah. signing. And um, it was just big news. You know, obviously, I had my brother at Southampton. Also, had a passion for Pompey. I'd love to have, have been there longer, but that's the way it worked out. You know, but uh, for me, everything was fant you know, great. And obviously, I couldn't wait to start, really. Was the cause surprised, or did you always have that in the back of your mind? You could make it I felt, go to a Portsmouth level. Yeah, I felt I had the ability. It's just a question of getting, like you said earlier, getting the break. You know, mm -hmm. and um, I suppose it's difficult for someone. Uh, probably the biggest thing for me was if someone come from the outside coming in, as opposed to my brother was an apprentice and something. Yeah. he worked through the system. I was obviously coming in and you know pushing someone else out of a job if you like, and you know, so it's a little bit more. Uh, uh, one or two made it sort of known of they want to welcome at the club. Uh, which made it difficult, but mm -hmm. yeah, like I said at the time, I just couldn't wait to sign for him. Yeah. Do you think that's that stigma was the biggest reason it didn't go to plan? Yeah, I mean, I suspect you might get a couple of other people's opinions. Obviously, it's just um, uh -huh. Tony, I know Tony <laughs> mentioned put up an arm around me, pat me on the back, all that sort of stuff. Um, and, and maybe that's it. Yeah, obviously, mm -hmm. you've got to learn how to manage someone. I guess you want yeah. some need a kick, some need an arm around the shoulder. Um, obviously, for me, it was very difficult. Obviously, I got in initially. I was playing in. In first team games behind closed door friendlies, thought okay here we go, and obviously then all of a sudden Frank Burrows got the sack, Bobby Campbell came along at the same time my contract was ending, and mm -hmm. um, he said well I've got my own plans, and uh, myself David Lee Worthy and Kevin Bartlett were at Pompey, and uh, he let us all go, you know, and he said no I've obviously got our plans to bring other people in, so within a matter of a couple of months I've been told I've got a contract, an extension of my contract, mm -hmm. to sorry you're not being kept on, you know, and that was eighty eighty two. You know, I think it was February, March 82, and I was getting married in July, mm -hmm. you know, I'm thinking obviously when my future was secure, obviously when we booked the wedding the year previous. Um, yeah. So, yeah, everything sort of changed very, very quickly, mm -hmm. you know, so, uh, yeah, disappointing. Obviously, I mean, obviously. never would mention about saying that there was probably a stigma there and that that was probably the reason why it worked out, didn't work out. Do you think that stigma from the top, even the top four divisions towards non-league players, non-league teams, has that gone away or eased up, or has it got worse? Um, it's probably, you know, I'd say it's probably eased a bit, obviously, mm -hmm. because no, you don't see too many local players playing for local uh, professional club nowadays. Mm -hmm. You know, let's say in, in my time, obviously, Southampton had a fantastic youth setup. You know, you Danny Wallace, Steve Morans, you know, Ruben O'Bullers, all these guys. Obviously, my brother, I better mention him. Um, <laughs> and and they had strong sides. Pompey had strong side, you know, mm -hmm. and they're all local. A lot of them, sort of five or six, were all local with Pompey lads, with Southampton lads. Um, so you don't see that much nowadays, you know, and um, let's say that's, that's the concern really, I think. You know, it's all about, you know, trying to sign players for big money all the time, you know, and you've got to live within your means, haven't you? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's happened to a lot of non-league sides over the years, just haven't got the budget, haven't got the money to be able to sort of go and get these players. Well, John Hawes did say, he did put in his form, he said, I don't know how Gary didn't make it um, 
Paul Sophie said, if we if he can't make it, none of us had a chance of making it. Oh, that's nice of him to say so. I mean, um, yeah, like I say, for me, um, when I left Pompey, mm-hmm. I had an opportunity to go and play uh, for a team called Gravesend, Gravesend Northfleet, because mm-hmm. uh, Stan Harland, who was the assistant manager at Pompey, uh, took the manager's job at Gravesend. And he asked me to go and sign for Gravesend, and, uh, which was obviously like a conference at the time. Um, my brother and my dad were absolutely mad because obviously I said, no, I'm going back to Gosport. Mm-hmm. And they couldn't understand it. He said, look, I can't understand why. You know, you, the money and everything else sort of came. You, I'd, be, I'd be earning a lot more money, blah, blah, blah. And there's only one other team for me at that stage. Obviously, I want to get mm-hmm. back and join the football Gosport again. Yeah. So your thought process was never, oh, I'm taking a step down here. It's oh, going back to somewhere. Going back to, yeah, and I love the place. I enjoy playing with the players, you know. And, um, uh, and maybe, let's say, with football, it's not all about mm-hmm. ability. It's all about mental strength as well, I guess, you know. And... Uh, uh, like I say, I think what my brother was alluding to is the fact that I sort of had the, the mental strength to go on and mm-hmm. you know pursue an, a professional career. I just couldn't wait to get back to gospel at the time, obviously where the things were going on at Pompey, you know. Yeah. So uh, yeah, like I say, I, I could have gone to Ferrum. I mean, Ferrum obviously signed all the lads Pompey have released, mm-hmm. like Sir Kevin Bartlett, David Lee Worthy, and uh, so obviously the idea was to build up a very strong sort of side at Ferrum. Uh, but no, I mean obviously I couldn't play for the. the uh, <laughs> I couldn't play for the, 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 the dreaded opposition in that sense. I mean, Gosport obviously with us, we always have great rivalry, mm-hmm. you know, Gosport and Ferrum. Um, and I always knew that, obviously, when I was a young lad, you know, it was always like the Gosport and Ferrum thing. Um, so, like I say, Gosport was a team for me in that sense. Did you have any frustrations when you left Portsmouth? Were you frustrated at times? I've got the feeling you know things. Yeah, I don't actually. I don't. <laughs> no, it's fair um, so there is something you got to say. It, no, you no, mentioned no. it. Now. I was, yeah, it was frustration without a doubt. Without a doubt, mm-hmm. like one or two made it clear that you know obviously I, I wasn't particularly welcome. Um, obviously, I had ambitions. I mean, Frank Rose himself told me I'd have an extension to my contract. So, mm-hmm. I mean, I thought I'd have another year there, at least you know, another year. Um, but as it turned out, like I say, Frank got sacked and um, Bobby Campbell, you know, within two months decided that, you know, you know I wasn't going to be part of his plans, you know, so uh, it was disappointing in that sense. Um, but I was probably restricted more, and obviously mm-hmm. I, was, I had a certain style of play. And obviously, Gosport, obviously, I was very much an attacking fullback, what they call a wingback yeah. nowadays. Uh, Gosport, uh, Pompey, obviously, it was very difficult. Obviously, you almost go over the halfway line and mm-hmm. get back, get back all the time. So, very much a defensive sort of mode at Pompey, whereas obviously, I was bought, I thought, to play my style of play, you know. Mm. So, I mean, I'll take a certain, I got blamed myself to a certain extent. I should have obviously just gone and done what I wanted to do, mm-hmm. but it's difficult, it's your job, you know, and mm-hmm. uh, you sort of fit to their style of play, yeah. You know? Did that frustration ever spill over to Gosport, or were you back to, yeah, yeah join, comfortable, you yeah, know, you yeah. knew what you were going to do, yeah. you knew how to play in that system? But financially, obviously, the amount of money we got at Gosport, mm-hmm. obviously, and the job, obviously, I had a full time job then, went back into the job, uh, and obviously, financially, I was just as well off as I was when I was at Pompey. Mm-hmm. But I had the security as well of a job and playing football at Gosport. So, from that point of view, uh, as I said, I was getting married in the July, so I was very much looking for security in that sense. Um, Frank Burroughs did ask me to go to Cardiff um, a couple of years later. Uh, I just said no. I just didn't even think about it. I said no, so I'm not interested. You know, that's obviously how mentally scarred I suppose I was. You yeah. know, from with Pompey. Uh, it's just obviously it is a very sort of cutthroat business in that at mm-hmm. particular that time. You know, obviously you know, I was the right back, but obviously the club captain was the right back. And if obviously he got injured, then someone else who was, was also a right back. So I was third in line to a certain extent. So it was always going to be difficult. You know, but yeah, like I say, you know, it just. For me, I, I have freedom to express myself at Gosport, you know, and uh, which I didn't really get at Pompey, mm-hmm. yeah. Which is a bit odd when you think, you know, you see me play a certain way, you, you want me to play that way, mm-hmm. you know, it didn't turn out that way, you know. But I say, Gosport, you know, no, it was, was the key for me, get back, enjoy my football, getting back with the lads, you know, and um, you know, from there on in, we had good times, you know, just as successful as anybody else locally. And do, do you think the, also the continued success of Gosport at the time, uh, in the Southern League, especially, there was no. I think, bef- just until the relegation, there was not one time when the side didn't finish outside the top four. That continued success helped as well. Oh, that yeah. you felt you made the right decision. It wasn't like a doubt. You think, oh, I should have gone here. I should have gone. Yeah, no. There. Obviously, like I said, a lot of the local guys, obviously, that I know respect now. Obviously, mm-hmm. that um, yeah, we used to play Waterloo girls and Bognors and 
obviously a lot of the guys my age obviously I knew you know rather than Pompey or whatever connections mm -hmm. um, so like I said and then most sides had settled sides in those days um, I'm sure you know and I know obviously one or two players were always tapped off on a Sunday come and play for us next year come and play for us next year. but we just were happy playing for gospel you know and uh, like I say for me unless I was going to go to another level if you like conference then it would have been a little bit different maybe obviously mm -hmm. but um, like I say gospel was the team for me without a doubt you know in that sense do you think at that time, you know, gospel so close to getting to that first division in terms of the non-league scene. What was missing that didn't mean they couldn't just go that extra step and get that promotion, last promotion? Well, I, th I think it's, you know, you've got a financial clout. And you know, obviously, mm -hmm. I think with gospel have never been strong financially. I mean, they're probably stronger now than they've had, they have been in the past. Um, and you've got to live within, well, certainly gospel have to live within their means, you know, so we can obviously attract big names at the time we just relied on the same players week in week out mm -hmm. and the guys obviously were getting in like so Paul Wiltshire uh, Russell Davis all these sort of guys were guys that have been obviously released by pro clubs and they wanted to come and play for us because we were the top non-league side mm -hmm. so you know we managed to sort of fill any gaps that we had and kept the momentum going you know mm -hmm. and uh, like I say obviously from us I think we played probably the, as highest levels we could yeah. you know without a little bit more sort of financial input and then obviously that would have to take it to another level um, but obviously that would have been like I say from our point of view then it would have needed a lot more investment in the club if they were going to go to another level without a doubt and then the other little blip is the relegation alright yeah, um, yeah. but we tried to forget that didn't you? yeah I did forget that one I must admit yeah I mean it's, it's just like I say difficult times and mm -hmm. yeah, it's one of those things you, you know I think we bounced back the following year, you know, obviously, and um, like I say, obviously, we had success all of a sudden, well, you know, and uh, but we all stuck together, no one left, you know, obviously, we all said, Look, we'll get out of this next year, um, and when we did, you know, so from that point, of view, we put it behind us pretty quickly. So, no one thought this is out of the permanent downfall, no, I don't think the, the good times are over, it's all, yeah, no, it's all bad think. from here now. We just took it again, took it in our stride, you know, obviously, oh, we got relegated, okay, well, next year, let's do something about it, you know, and um. Like I say, the good thing is, nowadays, I think you're probably five, five or six players that are left, they're going somewhere else, uh, but we all stuck together, you know. Obviously, I appreciate contracts play a big part, but mm -hmm. generally, there's nobody there saying, I don't want to play here anymore. You know, they enjoy playing, you know, and, uh, and that's what it was all about. Were there any particular reasons why there were struggles during that season? Because... All the rest of the time, yeah, it was winning, winning, winning. I mean, I'm, I blanked it out of my mind. It might be injuries. I don't know. I, I just, I do not know. I can't put a, my finger on it really. I mean, some strong sides, but like I said, we should have been strong enough to hold our own in the league. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think there's anything in particular. It could well have been things like one or two sort of crucial injuries. Mm -hmm. uh, Richie Colbert obviously was a star striker. Obviously, getting thirty odd goals a year. I think he had to retire fairly early on. You know, and obviously we missed him. Obviously, John and you know, came along. Ali Unit came along and filled apart. And uh, yeah, like I say, obviously we bounced back pretty quickly from there. Really, you even miss Richie Colbert after he tripped you up. <laughs> I thought to either mention that or not. Um, Colby was a character. I tell you what, if you, even if character. you didn't mention it, they <laughs> all told me to remind you because they say it was the funniest well, thing they ever saw. I thought I'd mention it. Um, I was, <laughs> yeah, I was. I was say I would have picked Tom Charlie, but obviously I was just so. Proud yeah, at the time, obviously, I think it was the second season. Yeah, it was obviously first season in Sunderland League. We had a brand new white kit. We all at the business. And I know she'd give me sticks. I used to clean my boots. My boots, we all sparkly, bright black, and everything else. But always sort of brand new as such. So it always sort of said a bit of a pose and things like that. But obviously, one or two, obviously, exactly the same. A cobalt being one. Uh, anyway, obviously, this, this ground Hounslow, I always remember it, as a mud heap, absolute mud heap. And they're a pretty hostile crowd as well. Um, so obviously, coming out the tunnel, start the game, I, I was obviously behind Tony, I always went number two behind Tony, mm -hmm. my only skipper, and um, Colbert was behind me, I'm to me, you know, obviously, so he just tapped my ankles as I went out, and obviously I went flying, basically, so yeah, the lads found that amusing. They did say to mention that, you know, it even if you forgot it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never never forgot it, and when I see Colbert, he reminds me as well. <laughs> did you watch behind your back every time now, you made sure it was I made sure he went behind me, without a doubt, yeah, I don't know, yeah, but as I say, it's, um, yeah, something that's uh, hilarious to some of the players, but not me at the time. But yeah, do you think that sums up that team spirit? You could do something like that, oh. and there was no falling out for it. It was just yeah. there was another thing where Tony mentioned that he shouted at John Hawkes for not running. Yeah, you know, and it then came out that he actually had broken his leg, and that's why he wasn't running the full distance. Yeah, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, like I say, obviously, we just had. Respect for each other. That's what it was. For me and Tom Mahoney, you know, I had 
the utmost respect for Tony. Obviously, like I say, he was playing for Gosport before I joined. Um, and I'd seen him play, and a guy is obviously, he's just one of those guys you, you know, obviously, you're, you're attracted to. Obviously, mentally, he's very strong, you know, and, uh, you know, he, is, he was Mr. Gospel, you know, what were his 700 appearances mm -hmm. or something, you know, so, you know, he's a fantastic career for Gospel, and he was a key player. He could have played for anyone locally as well, you know, and to be fair, three or four of that side could have done, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you know I hear stories of other managers bringing players up on a Sunday, you know, Waterfield, Bogners, the Fairhams, they're all ringing, you know, trying to get some of our players are going to play yeah. for them, you know. So, but we all stuck to it. Said no, but it's Gosport's the team, yeah. So then, of course, you go down, and then can bounce straight back up. Do you remember anything particularly about the run after Christmas? Yeah, it was well, sixteen well, games won out of the last nineteen. It, it was a it was a crazy time, wasn't it? Yeah, obviously it's just um, we were sort of you know scoring goals in the last minute, coming off your knees, coming off your you know your ankles, whatever. But obviously they were just getting results, you know. By you know you by sometimes being under pressure for eighty nine minutes you know mm -hmm. we go away and sneak a one nil win you know Worcester City Dover's all these sort of places so we used to say we used to laugh we dig the trenches this one guys obviously because so we dug in and we just sort of rode it and mm -hmm. come away with a win you know and so we had that mentality we had that momentum you know definitely and uh, it just saw us through to the last game of the season which was uh, topped it all really mm -hmm. yeah it was a f did you play in that game oh, I did. I wouldn't miss that one. <laughs> Did you score on it? Were you one of the uh, no, no, out? no. I think I, I made, made a couple possibly, but obviously we just got off to a great start. You know, mm -hmm. the, the, it was just a fantastic occasion. You know, Privet was buzzing. Mm -hmm. You know, we had to win by three clear goals, I think. Otherwise, Paul Town finished up runners up. Basingstoke won the league that year. And um, yeah, so we had to sort of win by three goals. Um, turned out winning 5 0. So, uh, you know, 1500. I still think it was more than 1,500. It was probably, you know, it was three deep all around the ground, you know, mm -hmm. the stands were full. And the, you know, the atmosphere was fantastic. Did that give you an added pressure or was, did you think you were already going to win? Yeah, no, no, not at all. Because we were on that run, we were on a roll, you know, obviously mm -hmm. the confidence was there. We didn't even think about losing. We didn't even, we didn't even speak about in a changing board game about what we had to do. We just went out there, we knew what we had to do and uh, it all clicked. Everything came together very well, you know. Simon Pope um, replaced Richie Colbert in a sense, he fitted in you know, brilliantly and you know we just adopted the same style of playing and we, and we trounced them really mm. when you walked out and you saw a crowd was it did anything change you think oh god there's a lot of pressure on here to win you know there's a no, lot of people honestly, who may have never come to the club and now their yeah. first game if you know guys lose it's going to be yeah I think everyone sort of like I said we, we just sort of got on board uh, was, I mean the good thing with Tony Brookwood obviously it just picked the team week in, week out, mm -hmm. you know, we knew what we had to do. Um, there was never any pressure about we had to do this, we had to do that. We just played our way and, and generally we got grounded out a result, you know, and uh, that day particularly, everything sort of fell in nicely for us, you know, obviously we got an early goal, I think. Um, Ali, I think Ali may have scored, obviously, and then uh, from there on in, we didn't look back, you know, obviously, and 5-0 uh, comfortable winners. Was that Tony Brickwood and Pete Edgar's <coughs> best? Quality as managers, they're, they're man managers. They oh, without take doubt. the pressure off you. Yeah, yeah. Even though there might have been times, but you never even noticed it. Yeah, there was no sort of you know teacups flying in the January right half time like that. Mm -hmm. um, Tony Brickwood particularly was very diplomatic, you know, and uh, and like I said, obviously he did the training generally on a Tuesday and a Thursday. On Peter, Melissa is not Peter Edgar, but obviously um, Tony obviously very much sort of got involved. Being a former player, he, he probably knew what it was like, you know, and from that point of view, he said just go out and play. You know, which is what we did. There was no tactics particularly. You know, we you know we just played to our strengths. You know, mm. and then so there was f further consistency in the league. Didn't another top seven finishes, and then also you won the Hampshire Senior Cup. Yeah. At um. At the Dell as well. We did, but bear in mind, Trevor. You know, Tony. Yeah, Tony Trevor. Peter. Yeah, Tony Peter retired. Um, eighty six, something like that, mm -hmm. around that sort of period. Um. So eighty seven, I think Trevor took over. Um, and like I say, an indifferent season probably, although we did get strong towards the end of the season. Uh, yeah, we've got the Hans Senior Cup final against Farnborough. You know, obviously Farnborough were conference league that, that time. Um, I keep mentioning Big Tom Charlie's, but they probably, you know, more, <laughs> more so. They had their nice tracksuits on there before the game and all that sort of stuff. Um, we just went out there and, and done the job. You know, obviously, it's like I say, we, it, it was so, so, oh, it was awesome, really. Yeah, great occasion. What was it like to play the Dell? You played at Fratton Park and now you played at Zell. Well, yeah, I mean, I played obviously at Dow before, you know, obviously, mm -hmm. so I was like behind closed friendlies and things like this. So, and obviously, I played a number of league 
ground. So obviously when I was at Pompey, so it wasn't sort of over, over daunting for me. Um, I don't think it was for anyone else really. You know, we knew we, had, we wanted to win. You know, and we, no matter where we were playing, you know, the crowd obviously one side of the stand, the ground was obviously open, so the stand was actually packed all on one side. Um, and again, you know, we got a great result and a good night. You know, we always had a good night. <laughs> was it a bit odd going to a ground? Obviously, you brought her club's rival, you know, you've been in Portsmouth before and you were going no, to the de- Was that a bit odd? Not really, no. I mean, like, odd, odd as it may seem, I've never had that sort of uh, bad feeling towards Southampton. Obviously, mm-hmm. I'm, over the years, it was always pumping Southampton. And obviously, with Ian, my brother being at Southampton, obviously, then I've probably sort of, um, you know, I've, I've watched a fair amount of Southampton games anyway, because obviously, with he's in the youth team, we just go watch as many games as I could. Um, so, yeah, no, for me, I mean, Fratton Park's far better ground than the Dell. Um, but obviously, nowadays it's changed, obviously, with St Mary's. But uh, yeah, I mean, the Dell was obviously a smaller ground, more intimidating type of ground, obviously, with people in, in, in your mm-hmm. face a little bit. But uh, yeah, no, for me, you know, it was just a great occasion. And what do you, what do you remember from else from that season? Was it. Well, it's much obviously the, the run into the season. Well, I think we ended up sick, didn't we, or something like that in the Southern Premier League. I'm not sure that's the season. It's gone so long ago now. But uh, we again, I mean, good with Trevor. I mean, Trevor knew how we played, you know, mm-hmm. obviously. But he adopted a certain style of play. He wanted to play a certain way, which suited me down on the ground. You know, it's all about the goalkeeper Tony Stairs getting the ball, mm-hmm. fullbacks getting wide, throwing out the fullbacks, just bomb forward, which is my game. You know, obviously, mm-hmm. as soon as I got the ball, off I went, uh, and that's the way he wanted. You know, obviously, if he goes forward, then someone covers, you know, and things like that. Um, so we had a style of play, uh, which is an exciting style of play. You know, mm-hmm. we had some good players who could play that style. And uh, yeah, we had a great season, very good season. I mean, Trevor, I've known from 77, you know, I assumed he was playing. Um, and Trevor liked to sing song and everything else after the game. And, you know, he was one of the lads. Um, so that was a little bit different, obviously, being a manager from being a player. But mm-hmm. in the day, he still, you know, still had that sort of um, charisma and, and he sort of injected a great team spirit. Did it shock teams the way you played? Because the pass, the passing, come playing out from the back, it's quite revolutionary at the time. Considering most teams would have done long ball, it was yeah, but a lot of people, manager-esque sort yeah. of style of play. But a lot of people you know, have said to me over the years that I was playing probably ahead of my time, obviously mm-hmm. the way I played. Um, but I used to sort of uh, I had times where I used to play like, as a winger, you know, obviously for other clubs and like mm-hmm. only sort of that Sunday side or whatever. Um, and uh, so I had a little bit of experience playing as a wing. Winger, but um, yeah, for me, like I say, I, I never even thought about it. I used to get the ball, get forward as quick as I can, get the ball in the box, Colbert and Hawes or Boswell to finish it off, you know. Um, you know, obviously, I scored a number of goals, but obviously, I was mainly me for me as a provider, you know, mm-hmm. obviously, get the ball in the box and someone else finish it off, you know. And uh, yeah, the style of play was excellent, you know, and um, we, we had to adapt slightly because obviously, it almost was route one, you know, obviously, in the early years with mm-hmm. the big guys up front. Later in the year, we started being you know, a bit more sort of um, stylish, if you like. How were, how was Trevor compared to Pete and Tony different as managers? I would say probably a little bit more astute sort of tactically, Trevor. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously he knew what he wanted. You know, he worked on set pieces a lot more than we ever did it before. Um, you know, obviously free kicks, corners, throw ins. Um, they say instilled on us early on how we were going to play, which is fantastic for me. Um, and it was good to me, to be fair. You know, obviously, as a manager, he's one of those who did probably put the arm around me rather mm-hmm. than, you know, not that Tony obviously kicked more in like that, he didn't. But um, yeah, he, had, he obviously, I think he appreciated how I played and wanted to play. Mm-hmm. Uh, and obviously, that benefited the team, you know. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, I had a lot of respect for Trevor. Did you prefer Trevor over Tony and oh, Pete as a manager? That's a bit unfair, that one. <laughs> um, I mean, Trevor, Tony obviously gave me my opportunity. Tony and uh, Peter obviously gave me the chance. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I've always never had a sink bad word against them. But um, for me, like I said, they gave me the opportunity, the opportunity. I had sort of six, seven, eight years, you know. Mm-hmm. Obviously, probably instrumental in, in getting me a contract at Pompey, you know, obviously, mm-hmm. because Tony came with me at the time. Um, yeah, so like I say, for me, Tony and, and Peter were, were excellent because what, what so too was Trevor, you know. We had, and we only had those, in my time, that's the only manager we had, you know, mm-hmm. so it's funny, we weren't changing every two minutes. And uh, so we had that continuity, you know. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's the biggest, one of the big reasons why Gosport has struggled? There's been a lot of chops and changes in manager. I mean, not the last season, but the season before, there was four different managers in one season. I think 100 players went, you went for 100 players. Uh, that's crazy, isn't it? There's, Chop and change. Do you think? Yeah. Of course, there was the financial struggles, which meant it changes. You got different well, think, ownership. But yeah. I think that's the way the game seems to have gone. Finances mm-hmm. come into it more and more. You know, obviously, and um, I think the problem is nowadays. Obviously, you've got to live within your means. You know, obviously, um, and the managers obviously ultimately get 
you know, other ones that go, obviously if you're not successful, but mm. you've got to have a team that want to play for you. You know, obviously and for us, we wanted to play for gospel. And um, obviously too much emphasis nowadays on, it's obviously money first, club second sort of thing. Uh, whereas when we were playing, it was the other way around. Very much, you know, we wanted to play for gospel. Okay, we've got better spending money as well. Mm. Fantastic. That was secondary. Playing for gospel was the prime, you know. I don't think that is the same nowadays, you know. And this is why I think it's key to get, you know, get the local guys back mm-hmm. involved again as quick as we can. Um, do you think you saw those also those changes, you know, during the late eighties? I know John and Tony both mentioned how they start to see, you know, at the start of their career, everyone was on the same wave. Doesn't matter how good you were, how old you were, how long you've been in, exactly. the same wave. Yeah. Well, it started to change, you know, during the later eighties. Well, it, late 80s yeah then. it didn't no it didn't all, in, all the time I played so I left gospel what 80, 88 um, and it, it was always everyone got the same unless you know somebody might have got expenses or something travelling mm. expenses but generally we all got the same you know obviously and it was I think it was £27 for an away win um, I don't mind saying that obviously because the other teams when we talk they always do ask oh what's she getting then oh, 27 you're having a laugh <laughs> 27 pounds and of course that had gone in the evening when Tommy got home we had a couple of beers and it had all gone um, but yeah like I say they, they were staggered the, amount of, the money that we were on all these top sides we were playing against um, so yeah like I say for us it was never a, a, an issue of you know, how much money I mean I, like I say I'm sure one or two other gospel lads could have got more money if they wanted to mm-hmm. you know um, but they just enjoyed playing for gospel simple as that do you think that helped as well no, you weren't sitting in the change room having that. Even if you had a bad game or something, you weren't sit, sitting there thinking, I could earn more money than him. He didn't try and he's earning more money. But, you know, yeah. it stopped that, almost that, even that slight negativity thought coming in. At I any think you're point. 100% right, Sam. Obviously, in the day, yeah. I mean, um, you know, people coming in, obviously, earning two or three times the amount of someone else it just doesn't seem right to me. You know, obviously, mm-hmm. I could do all the work down the right hand side, get a ball in. The guy obviously is on two hundred pound a week. Obviously, he scores the goal and gets all the plaudits, you know. And, yeah. uh, but you know, it's a team game, you know. So mm-hmm. I don't see why anyone should really be paid any more than anyone else. Uh, but it's obviously unfortunate that you know that's utopia, I guess. But it probably doesn't happen at the moment. You know, it's all about getting the best players locally, and sometimes you got to pay for that nowadays. You know, mm-hmm. obviously that's the only way you get success. But you've got, so I'd say, you've got to live within your means, and you can't keep spending the money if you've not got it coming in through the gates. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then in 1990, you moved to Havant. I, yeah, I did, yeah. A bit dodgy. <laughs> well, I think the thing is, obviously, with me, obviously, towards the, mm-hmm. later on in the late 80s, um, at work, I was, I was getting promotions, obviously, I was going to ask the manager offices and things like that. Mm-hmm. And the reason I, I left Gosport, obviously, was because it was very difficult for me. I mean, I, was, I know the side broke up, 87, mm-hmm. 88, and a lot of them went to Bainstone. But... I said, I could have gone to Bainstone. Trevor asked if I'd be interested in going to Gosport, um, go to Bainstone. Mm-hmm. I couldn't. Obviously, I know I couldn't do the travelling. You know, obviously, it's getting more and more difficult for me to travel. Uh, Havant was still in the Hampshire League at the time. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously, and I knew Kenny Todd from Pompey. Obviously, he was at Pompey for a little while. Um, he said we'd be interested. To, yeah, I would, but obviously, because, you know, so I know it's going to be harder for me to, to travel. Um, so, obviously, that's why I left. Uh, apart from the side, obviously, breaking up. Obviously, so we lost all the guys, obviously, I was used to playing with. Um, but like I say, that was another reason I had it come into play. Obviously, the job was putting more pressure on me not to have so much time off. Um, so I sort of local, you know. And it even shows when I when I haven't, I couldn't finish my contract. I haven't because they got promoted in the Southern mm-hmm. League. And the same thing. I said I just can't play as often as I want to because of work. What job was that? If you don't mind. Me? I was at the state agency. I was sort of mm-hmm. working. So I generally had to work Saturday afternoons. You know, when I first started, you know, we had a great arrangement because we had. You know, the person I was working for was a great gospel fan, so he said, oh, "Okay, well, I'll cover you. I'll cover you winter Saturdays and work the summer Saturdays." So we used to work around it, you know. But as I say, it's the more the more the pressure got of running an office and things like that, then it's me. It's all getting my boss was a little quiet more worried than me and saying, "Look, you can't keep taking this time off, you know." Uh, because you imagine we were going to Merthyr Tidville on a Tuesday mm-hmm. night, uh, you know, obviously probably leaving at sort of lunchtime on the Tuesday and getting home mm-hmm. half past three in the morning, Wednesday morning, going to work, obviously. And so yeah, so like I say, the pressure is certainly on. Um, and that's probably another reason why I, started, like, I had to sort of step down and go to, a, you know, then I went from having to, I'll probably come on to it in a moment, went to East Lee from there, you know. Yeah, as a gospel fan, he didn't put more work if you didn't, if you didn't win, did he now? Sorry? I said he didn't put more work on you if you didn't win. No, 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 exactly <laughs> right. No, I mean, like I say, it's, um, yeah, the, the, the good thing is it's um, everyone in gospel worked the town to mm-hmm. do well, you know. And, you know, obviously back in the day, we used to, Saturday mornings, we'd walk down the high street and, uh, 
umpteen number of people sort of want to know obviously about the game blah 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 you know and uh, so yeah obviously is that instant recognition uh, because that's what the town would like you know the town was a, a bustling the high street at one time mm -hmm. you look at it now obviously it's fortunately it's fallen on sad at times but yeah generally obviously there's that interest in the club yeah and you said, talked about all the players you know going to different clubs like the Bayern stuff do you think one of also maybe the reasons you left Gosport was there, there was that maybe bit of disconnection from the club you know the, the your mates essentially you grew up with the whole time absolutely it wasn't you didn't have the same relationship with the club you had before it was it didn't maybe mean as much to you um i'm not sure the club went so much to me obviously it was difficult losing the team obviously because mm -hmm. say you know six or seven talking six or seven players out of out of 11 obviously it was quite a massive sort yeah. of you know obviously was, i did stay the first i stayed with south tony mahoney tony stairs andy loman i think three or four did sort of say that was stay with mm -hmm. it um but like i say obviously that as it the season went on the di more difficult was the same pressure of working everything else um and obviously from there on in it probably sort of started off the bad times obviously you know and for the next four or five years it became very very difficult i think trying to build a team again so have a, how was how Haven't different to Gosport? Well, Hampshire League to start with. I yeah. mean, obviously, it was a good setup. I mean, Derek Pope um, was a local sort of um, legend, if you like. Obviously, when it comes to local football, you know, he played for money fields, but, yeah, he had a lot of respect. Um, obviously, and the setup itself was good. I mean, I knew Peter Ennis and Kenny Todd. Um, obviously, who were Pompey. And um, for me, you know, they were the strongest side locally. And first season, we got promoted. So, obviously, we well, made sense sorry, the second season we got mm -hmm. promoted. Um, and obviously then, because I went in the Southern League, that's when and obviously my career I haven't sort of more or less stopped. Tony Mount was the manager, who was Mason Mount's dad, you know, obviously, and uh, it, it more or less, it's getting more and more difficult for me to play. I told Derek, and Derek said, well, no, we're, we're going to retain your contract. Uh, so I didn't play for a couple of years, you know, and obviously then he asked me to play for him after that. Mm -hmm. So it was a little bit sad, really, in that sense. Well, even, you know, even though it ended you know, in the way you didn't want it, even there was success throughout your time, you know, you ended up getting promoted. Was there that you never had that thought of saying, Oh, I wish I was back at Gosport? Did you sort of have that at any point at Haven? Um, well, I came back to Gosport, didn't I? I don't know mm. if you, you know, I came back and uh, Dave and Roger Sherwood asked me to play, and I did. You know, obviously, you can say at the time Gosport had dropped down into the Hampshire League again. So, as you can see, obviously, there's a pattern there. <laughs> um, obviously, uh, and I'm, you know, if Gosport were in the Hampshire League, then obviously I probably never left, but obviously mm. it was the travelling, you know, obviously which was a problem for me. Um, but when Gosport dropped down, obviously then I came back for you know obviously during my career it really, you know I went to Eastleigh for one season, but then I finished, oh, it must have been ninety six ish something like that. I think mm -hmm. I was thirty six, thirty seven. Um, so I started and I finished with the club, you know. Did so you, did you go back to Gospel just because they'd gone down from EC or was it was there some of that happening? At well, I knew I knew Dave and Barry Cook who were the managers, mm. you know, obviously and. Um, I mean, it's always that pull of, you know, the enclosure at Private Park, mm -hmm. you know, obviously for me and Gosport are my team, you know, without a doubt, you know, um, can't be in a Gosport lad, but uh, yeah, like I said, the fact obviously it was more local, you know, you people like Dave Taverner, Paul Pinder, all these sort of guys playing, uh, who were sort of Gosport guys, Carl Liss, um, Stuy Hensman, I think it was there as well as a Gosport lad, and it was, you know, you can see the pattern, there are four, five, six mm -hmm. Gosport lads, you know. Of course, at the time, the club was in a bit of a different state, they had financial difficulties, did you... Was there a different atmosphere when you came back to the club? Oh, it's nowhere. Or? Yeah, there was nowhere near, you know, the, the, mm. the heights we were used to. I mean, financially, not so much interested in, in the money because they we weren't getting paid for it. It's just purely playing for your hometown club again, you know. Um, so yeah, from that point of view, we had to accept where we were. You know, obviously, it's going to take a bit of rebuilding. Mm. Um, we've gradually got stronger, and stronger. We had some good moments. We beat. I remember we beat um, Eastleigh here in the FA Cup. Uh, Roger Sherwood was the manager of Eastleigh at the time, and. Mm. Uh, a little bit of a sing song after that game, Dave, Dave Taver and myself. Um, so, yeah, like I say, from that point of view, we had some good results, but we just weren't, you know, a competitive side anymore, you know, mm -hmm. and we started losing the sort of our dominance, if you like. Mm -hmm. You know, the Water Eagles were stronger, mm -hmm. more consistency, you know, Farron, and Bogner, you know, always been pretty consistent sides, you know. Um, but, like I say, it's all about being able to attract the, the right type of player, I guess. So, did you feel the dressing room didn't? Uh, of course, it was different players in it. The dressing room atmosphere was it different, or was it? Did you feel it was overall the same? Because there's still yeah, well, those five or six gospel lads in it. Well, I think when I came, when I find, came back in the first season after I left. Um, mm -hmm. Roger Show was a manager, and he had five or six Southampton players, Southampton based players. Mm -hmm. So certainly, I've noticed a changing room, not the same there. Second time round with Dave, there was like let's say like there's a Pat Tavernier and Paul Pinder and things like that. 
Um, so it was four or five gospel lads, and the atmosphere was, you know, let's go out there, play for the shirt guys, you know, mm-hmm. and that's obviously what we did. Um, so, yeah, although we might only finish up mid-table in the Hampshire League, certainly you, can, you feel there's a bit of stability there, you know. Uh, but it was not going to get to, we just didn't have the, the resources to, mm-hmm. you know, get back into the Southern League and things like that, really. Did it, did, was it John Halls, was he quite big in getting you back? Because, you know, you knew what he was about, you knew him as a player, yeah. and it was, you knew his ideas, what he would want. Yeah, well, well he's obviously a chairman, obviously John played for a while, and um, yeah, like I said, obviously it was, it was the fact, obviously it certainly was one of those things that came into the mind, obviously mm-hmm. let's, let's get back playing, enjoying, and uh, you know, playing with people that you know, sort of thing, you know, and so the atmosphere was great, it's just obviously, it's all about finances, I guess, you know, obviously, and uh, you know, with that, uh, with that sort of ingredient, you're not going to be successful, because obviously, you know, you're not going to get the best pick of the local players, really. You know, they're always going to go to someone like Waterloo or Bognor or, or Fareham, you know. Uh, but like I say, obviously now, I think over the years, you'll probably see Waterlooville or haven't Waterlooville. Obviously, they're one of the most consistent sides locally, mm-hmm. you know, because they've got the finances. Do you think Gospel could maybe reach that level? You know, What's, no, Ian's got, you know, a bit of money, you've got a bit of backing to help push the club up. I don't know Ian that well, be honest. So, but I know he's, he was at Pompey. Um, it's going to take a lot of money, but obviously it's going to come a time where he's not going to keep want to keep mm. you know money in. Um, so you've got to get the club obviously standing for itself, which for me is a key uh, element. It's the social side is obviously getting the clubhouse going, um, getting revenue in from that side of things. Get your crowds up to you know you know eight nine hundreds thousands whatever you know. Um, but they will come back. You know, obviously want. But I think a lot of people would like to see the local element, you know, obviously four or five local guys given an opportunity. Uh, and I say, why not? You know, like Frank Lampard's at Chelsea, he's not all an issue about finding big names. Mm-hmm. Obviously, getting local lads a go or young lads a go. Uh, why not? Try them. I'm sure Sean's got that in his mind, you know, his mm-hmm. mindset, fair, and hopefully it'll all work out. Do you think also the um, food bank project, I mean, there's still some stuff around yeah, us. That That would be the stuff that helps entice people to come back to the club the community left well Dave Tamner rang me he sort of said look I'm doing this I'm doing all this stuff mm-hmm. what do you think I said let this do it it's obviously it's something that it's, it's so important obviously for a local town um, and they say obviously whether they're, they're all going to come flooding back again I don't know obviously mm-hmm. we're in difficult times aren't we obviously and uh, you know jobs and everything else is a concern um, but obviously it's all about people getting value for money I think mm-hmm. obviously like I say if they come and put money over the gate and see a good game or someone putting mm. in 100% effort, effort week in week out then I'm sure they're going to come back you know it's only going to take sort of you know a, a good few games to, to get the spirit back I'm sure but you know for me it, even more so if you've got two or three local guys I'm sure there's going to mm. be that even more local interest do you think also like yourself and other ex-players getting involved will help Encourage um, people, you know, these are familiar faces. Yeah, they, we're they dinosaurs, just... aren't we? <laughs> yeah. no, let's, be, let's be honest. I mean, obviously, you know, the, 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 the appearance of it over the years, I mean, not many people obviously mm. know, know of us or Tom Mahoney, particularly. I mean, he's obviously you know, a legend at the club. Um, I'm not sure if many people do know of him, but obviously, hope they do because uh, he's put so much over the years mm-hmm. to, to the town football club, you know. Um, and like I say, for us, you know, we, we had a a legends thing a little while back, you know, obviously where we were recognised mm-hmm. for a number of appearances and things like that. And that's great, I think, obviously, for the recognition because you've got to have that connection, I think, you know, obviously. There's still people that obviously were coming in sort of 30, 40 years watching. And I'm sure, obviously, one or two still remember how we used to play. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but like I say, that's unfortunate. You know, as you get older, you know, obviously, a new generation comes along, doesn't it? But like I say, they're all about being entertained, really. Certainly more professional nowadays than it ever was. Mm-hmm. You know, your clubhouse, things like that. You've got your commercial side going. Uh, we never had any of that, you know, obviously we had a jumper, club jumper, used to wear the white games and that was it, you know, but obviously I look at all the kits around now and they're fantastic to see, you know. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's all it's all set for a success. It's just a question obviously, a bit of stability and uh, success, I suppose, once you get a few games of success, mm-hmm. then FA Cup runs them like that and I'm sure they'll come back. So retired in at the age of 37, did you go into management or did you ever consider going into management? I, no I didn't really be fair it's just about work obviously it was mm-hmm. work 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 really obviously the job obviously was very much sort of um, Monday to Friday Saturdays um, you know obviously half eight to seven um, I became a partner of a company I'm more or less took all my time you know obviously mm-hmm. and then uh, so yeah unfortunately management never although I do you know, regret to a certain extent my wife's always saying, "No, you, you know, you, you should be coaching kids or something." You know, but I just find that, yeah, you know, it's just one of those things that didn't work out in that respect. You know, and not many of us have really. I mean, look at John, Tony, myself. Uh, not many of us have gone into management. You know, obviously, it's a bit weird, really. I don't know why. 
do you think any of you ever might get involved in? I know there's the Centre Eight teams, which is going from under nine all the way to under twenty three. That's a lot of teams there. Yeah, we don't get Tony. Did Tony Stairs, didn't he? And, and his mm-hmm. son obviously were involved. Um, I think we're here for a little while, and maybe I haven't now, but um, haven't Woolleyville. Uh, but yeah, I mean, obviously, it would only take someone to get involved or, or be asked. I guess you know, obviously, mm-hmm. someone asked Tony and whether he would be interested. I don't know, but it just needs someone to say, look, come and give us a hand. I'm sure you know. I'm sure there'll be a few people interested. Mm-hmm. Do you think, of course, at, you know, at the sort of, sort of time you retired as well, the reserves um, group had gone essentially because of the financial problem. Do you think there was a reserves team there at the time you would have maybe gone into that? I mean, it's a lot less time and effort you need to put into yeah, the well, reserves compared to the first team, for example. Well, the same thing happened with us, obviously. We had to go squad. You know, I mm-hmm. just couldn't afford to run two teams. So when I first started out, we had a reserves, and obviously it was 16, 17. But then the reserves had to sort of be sort of mm-hmm. scrapped because we just couldn't afford to keep it going, you know. Um, so yeah, say it's very much operating on a squad uh, rotation basis. Um, but say football's a completely different game nowadays. You know, obviously, I think I'm not sure how many sort of guys live locally at Gosport now, but there's probably five or six coming in on Tuesday and Thursday mm-hmm. all over all over the country, sort of thing. You know, um, and I think that's that's the difference now. It's completely different. You know, so it's difficult to say uh, what would change. I mean, you've got, obviously got to have probably 15 guys. I, I guess are all prepared to be patient and wait for the opportunity of playing. Mm-hmm. You know, or us, we never sort of. Never thought about not playing. Every Saturday, we knew we'd be playing. You know, and so it's the same team, more or less, week in, week out. And then, after you retired, did you go to many gospel games? Or did you find yeah. it something too frustrating to watch? No, you know? no, obviously, I'll come back, obviously, every now and again. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, like I say, obviously, I've seen a few. Alex Pike, I used to be at school with, so I knew Alex. Um, um, you know, so we've had a, you know, obviously a few words over the years with Alex. And, uh, you know, he was very good to us, to be fair. You know, the former players, mm-hmm. he set up this... Um, yeah, legends thing. Obviously, yeah, we had a table. Obviously, where like a big sort of honours board and things that he did, which is, seemed to have disappeared. But obviously, yeah, you know, going to have to have to search around afterwards, go and find it. <laughs> it was painted over, I believe. But yeah, <laughs> uh, but that's just something like that. But actually, he could he understood the the need for that as well, yeah. you know. Um, and I think it's going to need some strong management saying, look, no, they, they, these guys do need to be recognised in some respect. Um, and like I say, it was just a nice touch. But obviously, I knew Alex. I've known him for years, you know. Mm-hmm. And, uh, He's still around locally, I believe. I think he's at East Lee now, but uh, you know, but he did good things for the club. You know, he also done some other things well, which is probably not so good. But in the, the day, I think he had all good intentions. He got the club to Wembley, uh, and his track record was pretty good. And obviously, I think mm-hmm. he took Livingston to Wembley many, many years ago in the bars and these sort of things. So he had a good track record as a manager. But you've got to have good people around you. That's what I'd say. Mm-hmm. Now, now with Sean, um, do you think he can take the club? To that heights of success, he maybe to well, what well, he's been, Yeah, he's been well respected locally. I, I think mm. what you're finding now is players that have played for him before want to play for him again. You know, mm. and that's what it's all about. You know, obviously you've got that respect, instant respect from your manager and the players. You've got that relationship, and uh, yeah, I think certainly it bodes well for the club. Um, Sean, I think I've read already that he he, he can see the importance of, of a local connection. Uh, hopefully, not only local players but the, the fans coming back. Um, and I hope, like I say, things like an academy or something like that, where you can, people can start seeing young kids coming through, you know. Uh, so I wish him every success, you know. Uh, I know he's well respected locally at Haven and whatever, and um, he's done a great job wherever he's gone. Do you think his experience of success in Norley will help? I know he's mentioned about bringing young players, but also getting maybe players that for thought they were maybe a bit high quality, maybe also for, to encourage them to come. You know, compared well, to Lee, who, yeah, he could attract players from having where he used to play, but he didn't have the track record no, of like, Sean Gale. Yeah, like I said, it's all about, you know, he's got a great reputation locally, Sean, I believe, and, um, you know, obviously, I think he's got a good knowledge of the game as well, mm-hmm. and he's got the respect of players, you know, which is why people are signing for him again, you know. Uh, I'm sure people like Rory Williams have played for him before, and, you know, and there's others there who are keen to sign, so that can only bode well. I say, for me, it's just a question of the club being amateur manage their resources properly you know obviously you can't pay them the money if it's not coming in at the other end you know so you've got to sort of be careful and it's sort of one day the chairman are going to say enough's enough you has got to you know, sort of survive on his own this club mm-hmm. you know can't keep putting money any week in week out um, so that's what it's all about really getting the, you know getting the crowds back getting the atmosphere buzzing again and uh, i'm sure sean has got you know all the ingredients for that now got the final bit the yeah. toughest question all right who do you think are the three best players you played with at Gosport? Well, definitely for me, pretty easy for me. Um, Tony Mahoney, head and shoulders. Mm-hmm. You know, obviously for me, like I say, I've, uh, obviously when I he was there when I sort of 
first sign he was you know obviously there towards the end of my career as well but he was just a great guy on and off the pitch you know obviously and I had a lot of respect for him Steve Ingman you know alongside him fantastic centre half you know obviously and, and, uh, he was playing when I came back from Pompey obviously so we had a settled back four then mm -hmm. with Tony in goal Tony stayed in goal back four with myself Tom Mahoney Steve Ingman Russell Davis you know obviously and week in week out that was our side and Steve had the pace he, he had the ability um, so yeah he, you know, he, he was a great player for me and thirdly, uh, going back a little bit long further, is Richie Colbert. Yeah, mm -hmm. Richie Colbert was a great striker. Difficult one, really, because John as well. John Hawes has been a fantastic servant of gospel. But Rich, I knew from my first started playing, you know, and uh, every season he was getting 30 goals mm -hmm. plus, you know. He was a character, apart from you know, the odd tricks now and again up his sleeve. Uh, so you have the game about the trick, <laughs> have you? <laughs> um, no, so you know, things like that, you know, obviously, and he was just a great character. You know, mm -hmm. I got to know him well over the years, and, uh, you know, and he was a legend. Obviously, it hurts. He's fat, he lost his goal scoring record to uh, Justin Bennett. Um, he used to ring me out every week saying, oh, he's only got another two to go. He's only rich, he's going to get it. He's only 23, and he's still in the already. Um, so, yeah, it, it meant something, it still does mean something to him, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, he loves gospel. And I'm sure it'd be nice to see these people come back because Rich yeah. is, is a successful local businessman these are the people you know probably mm -hmm. need to sort of get involved and hopefully you get Rich here and things like that and see the good times you know mm -hmm. but for me like I say a good social side is, is key you know getting a club clubhouse buzzing you know and getting the, the income coming the revenue coming in mm -hmm. and then obviously then you can start going from there can't you so it's all good times ahead I hope yeah, that's the perfect way to end it. Yeah. That's all we have time for on this episode of the Private Park Legends podcast. I'd like to thank Gary for coming on. Did you have a good time? I did. Thanks, Sam. Pleasure. It's yeah. nice talking about uh, all the old times. <laughs> I'd like to thank um, everyone for listening to this episode of the Private Park Legends podcast. And bye for now. <laughs>